We now get to take a deeper dive into the importance of biodiversity, and I'm going to turn it over to my, my friend, Fabrice de Klerk, the Director of Science uh, at EAT and a Senior Science with the Alliance of Biodiversity and SEAT, and Kevin Cody, a Senior Manager for Food EDU with the American Heart Association, and Jackie Bertolda, Bertoldo, sorry, a Senior Curriculum Manager for Food EDU with the American Heart Association. Before they come to the stage, sorry for Breeze, <laughs> we're going to watch a short video called What's in a Tomato? Enjoy everyone. Do you like tomatoes? Do you like them fresh from the vine, sliced up in salads, or cooked in stews? And do you know what tomatoes are made of? You can learn a lot from a humble tomato about the environment and how food impacts our health. I'm Selena Ahmed, and I'm gonna take you on a tour of this tomato. If we zoom in using the latest analytical technology, we'll see that it's made up of thousands of tiny building blocks called biomolecules, like a big pile of Lego blocks that can be put together in different ways to make different things. When you eat the tomato, you bring all those building blocks into your body where they get shuffled around and used in different ways. It pays to know what you're putting into your body because you might be getting too much of one thing and not enough of something else. So what kinds of building blocks do we find in a tomato? Let's first look at the types of biomolecules that a tomato plant can make itself or absorb from the soil in which it's grown. Like all edible plants, tomatoes consist of three major types of biomolecules. Macronutrients, including carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, which give us energy and help us grow. There are also micronutrients, such as minerals, including phosphorus, calcium, iron, and vitamins, like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K. We need these compounds in small amounts, but they are critical in helping our bodies grow and develop and even repair ourselves when needed. There are also specialized metabolites. We find hundreds of these types of compounds in tomatoes. Specialized metabolites give plants superpowers to help them protect themselves from predators and also to communicate with their environment. These specialized metabolites also help our bodies in ways we are still learning about. For example, lutein, a yellow colored specialized metabolite, helps keep our eyes healthy. But there are other types of compounds that can enter a tomato plant from farming or processing. These are things like pesticides, herbicides, preservatives, and we're still working out what impact these types of compounds have on our bodies when we consume them. And it gets even more complicated and interesting. You see, not all tomatoes are the same. They first evolved in South and Central America and Mexico, where I'm speaking from today, about 2,500 years ago. These days, tomatoes are grown all over the world. Farmers everywhere have selected particular tomatoes that they liked and passed down the seeds over generations. Now, there are over 10,000 varieties of tomatoes with different color, sizes, tastes, and biomolecules. So it makes sense that not all of these tomatoes are equally good for us or our planet. Here in Ghana, as in other places, some farming practices make soil healthier so that we can grow food with more of the biomolecules we want and need. Other farming practices damage soil by adding less desirable molecules to our food and creating lots of greenhouse gas emissions in the process. Different methods of processing, cooking and storage further change our tomato biomolecules too. It's a lot to think about. But if we mapped out all of the building blocks in tomatoes, along with where and how they're grown, stored and prepared, we could figure out how to best get tomatoes that are healthy for people and the planet to our plates. So that's what we're doing, not just for tomatoes, but for the thousands of edible species on our planet. The Periodic Table of Food Initiative is on a mission to map all of the biomolecules in the world's food supply because when we know more about what's in our food, we can make better choices in our farming, processing, handling, shopping, and eating to get more of what's good for all of us and the planet.